Hi everyone, my name is Mark Moikins from Big Mountain Studio. This is the second part in a small series of videos where I'm teaching you how to customize the picker view. And in the last video, I showed you how to create this custom picker view that has these three fields in it. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a horizontal picker view like this. And there's some tricks to it that you need to do, but we already did a lot of the work in the previous video. So this video should be a little bit shorter and we're going to be using the existing picker views. We're just going to be making them horizontal instead. Okay, so let's get into it. Now the first thing I need to do is go into my view and make some changes for the picker views. So one's on top of the other instead of them being side by side. So what we're going to do is, is we're going, I have two views stacked on top of each other. So we're going to hide one so I can see the one below it. And this is the one that we're going to change. So what's going to happen is I'm going to take this view and I'm going to kind of like lay it out horizontally like this and same with this one. And let's grab this label. We'll put this label over here and we'll just make that left aligned. Same with this one, we'll make it left aligned. Okay, now for this uh, picker view, it's going to kind of like take up this size right here, you know, going horizontally. And by default, it's going to be 100 high. So let's just get the layout right here so make sure we have a good layout. So we'll change that width or that height to 100. Let's change this one to 100. And let's move these up just a little bit. Yeah, I think that looks okay right there. Okay. Whoops. Let's make sure that's right up against the left right there. Okay, good. Okay, so we hit the layout set up. Now what we actually have to do to make this horizontal is I'm going to apply a transform to it to rotate it 90 degrees. So remember how it was set up before vertically? I'm just basically going to rotate it 90 degrees and I'll show you what that looks like. That's not all we have to do. There's a few more steps that we have to do to make this work. All right, now the first thing we need to do is we need to apply a, a rotation transform to the arrival day picker. So let's do that. So I'm going to say arrival day picker and do a transform. In the arrival day picker, that's our first custom UI picker view that will be on the top. And I'm using a CG affine transform. And I've covered CG affine transforms in many of my videos in the past. So if you just look for some of my other videos, you know that like one of them, a good one is uh, fun with CG affine transforms, I think it's called. It'll go over what affine means and what transforms are. There's also a lot of my other videos cover this too. So <laughs> just check out any of my animation videos and I usually go over it. Um, so I'm not gonna get into what it means here. So what I want to do is I want to rotate it here. And it wants a rotation angle, but this rotation angle, I can't just say like 90 degrees because what it's looking for here is it's actually looking for radians, which is another type of angle. And so I can't use degrees. What I need to do is convert it first. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to, instead of putting the formula here, I'm going to create a variable that holds the rotation angle. And it's going to be a CG float because that's the number it's looking for or the type it's looking for here. I'm going to assign the value here. So the formula, the way this works out is you type in your degrees first and then you do a multiplication on a division. <laughs> so we want pi divided by 180 and that will give you radians down here. So now I can just use that rotation angle. And I put this rotation angle in a variable because I'm also going to be using the same rotation on this picker down here as well. Right here. Okay, good. So let's see what this gives us. Oh, I always make this mistake. We uninstalled 
the uh, the first view so we have to make it installed again if we go here it's this one right here the one that's grayed out is the one that has the installed unchecked so let's check that so it brings it back and run it again okay we'll click next all right look at this so we're it's kind of the way we want it right it's it's scrolling horizontally <laughs> But it's not quite what we were expecting. For one, the width, remember we made it 100, 100 high for, you know, to make sure everything was positioned. So when we rotate it, it's really 100, it's still 100 high, it's just rotated on the side. So what we need to do is we need to adjust all of these heights and widths to make sure the width covers the width of the view. So let's do that. And you know, there might be an easier way, but all I'm doing is just going to reset the frame. If you guys definitely know of an easier way, let me know, because I, I would like to know, and share it with everyone else in the comments below. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create another frame. And, you know, I'm just going to use the simple integers. This will be zero. Now for Y, so where it's actually set right now on the storyboard, is a good position because we positioned everything the way it should be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the original y value in a variable here. I'll just say var y equals and just store the original y value from the original frame origin dot y. There we go. And then I'm going to use that right here. And for the width, you know, we want the width to be the width of the view, right? Like that. And for the height, that'll be just 100. Okay. Now, before I do the other one, let's run this and just see what it looks like. Wait, what is this saying first? Oh, it wants us to change it to a let, but we're not, we're not going to because we're going to use it down here too. So we're going to modify its value later on. So we'll just leave it as a variable for now. <laughs> okay, where, where is this? It's like way up here. The Y arrival day picker frame origin Y. Okay, I know what the problem is. <laughs> so, so after I rotate it, the Y is gonna be different, right? At this point. So I actually need to set the Y <laughs> before I transform anything. So let's set it up here. Then now let's run it and see what it looks like. Okay, this is much better. But there's one thing I want to bring to your attention. Notice, you know, when I scroll it back and forth, you still have space right here. So it's not, even though I set the width to the full width of the view, it actually doesn't take up the full width. And so we're going to change that. We're, we're going to offset this width. We're going to give it another, uh, this looks like about maybe like 100 on each side. So we're going to increase the width by 200 so it stretches it out even more. And this is one of those things I, I told you, like <laughs> this horizontal picker, is it's real hacky. And, you know, someone did create like a horizontal scroll view picker, I think, or something like that on GitHub but it uses a collection view instead. I kind of wanted the challenge of like, how can I use the picker view and make it horizontal? So that's kind of the reason why I'm doing this. So if we look at the width, let's just add 200 to it. Whoops, what's it saying here? The width, I'm taking the width. Oh, just put a space in there. But it's gonna go 200 to the right so what I need to do with my X is I need to make that negative 100. Whoops. Right there. So now it's going to start putting a negative 100 here. It should have it start right on the border or on the, the left margin of the view. So let's see how that looks. Okay, good. This is much better. It's, you see how it starts 
right up against the margin here and it ends at the margin here. So this is exactly what we want. But you notice the view is not looking the right way. So we need to alter that as well. And we're basically just going to rotate it the opposite direction. So let's finish setting up this other UI picker first and then we'll rotate the view. So I'm going to use, reuse that same variable up above for the Y and set that to the departure day picker dot frame dot origin dot y okay and then after I transform it then I'm going to reset its frame and it's pretty much going to be the same code so I'm just going to copy this and set that there and that should do it so let's take a look Okay, now this view looks good. It's set up the right way, showing the right way. But the problem is, is that this is the 1st of May and we have to scroll to the left. It seems backwards, right? So we did this wrong. When we rotated it, we didn't want to rotate it 90 degrees. What we actually want to do is rotate it a negative 90 degrees. So the 1st of May starts here and the 2nd of May is over here, 3rd of May, 4th of May, and so on. So let's correct that mistake. Now again, what we want to do is we want to make that negative. And if we're making this rotation negative, then we have to go back here and make this positive. So it balances itself out. Uh, this is better, right? So we have the 1st of May, 2nd of May, 3rd of May. Okay, that's great. So what I want to do here is one last change before we end off is I want to have it so it starts off like this. It goes three days in on the last night, just to give it a little bit of range. Okay, so what I'm going to do is on this departure day picker, I'm going to select a row with the select row function. And it's right here. So select the row. And remember it's zero base, of course, so let's set it to two. So it starts on row two. Component. Remember, that is like the columns that we have. We only have one, so that will be zero. And for animated, we could say true. I don't think it'll make a difference on the view did load. So let's run that. There you go. Okay, good. That's all I have for this video. And I hope you guys learned a cool new way to create a horizontal picker view. And remember, there's only really like a few different things that you had to, that we had to change. The hardest part was figuring out the rotation and then assigning it the new frame so it goes all the way to the edges of the screen. And that was done with just these two lines right here. So here we, we figured out the rotation angle then here we set the frame. And then the second thing that we had to do, or the third thing I guess you could say, is we had to rotate the view that was inside the picker view for each row. And that is pretty much how you create your horizontal picker view. And in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to add another function to this picker view delegate. So every time the row is selected, or changed rather, we're going to fire off a notification that will look at both picker views and figure out how much the person will have to pay depending on the dates that they pick. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. And consider sharing it on social media with your friends or on Twitter, Facebook, you know, things like that, or even on your blog. And consider subscribing because we have one more video to come out in this series, and then we're going to wrap it all up. All right, thanks.